Hello, my most amazing artists. Today, we're going to be creating an optical illusion. To start, you're going to write your name and your class code in pencil on the back of your paper. Then you'll flip it over to the front side where we're going to actually start with just our hands to fold our paper today. When I fold my paper, I'm going to first fold it the style that we call a hamburger style sometimes, matching up the corners of my paper and matching up those edges and then giving a good pinch on the other side. Then I'm going to crease that fold of the paper and then I should be left with a line when I open it up. If you can't see the line inside, make sure you match up those edges again, give it a good pinch and slide your fingers down to make a crease. Then you should be left with the line on the inside. Now I'm going to open it up and I'm going to fold it the opposite way. So I just folded it what we call hamburger sometimes. And now I'm going to fold it hot dog style. That's the long way. I'm going to be folding it that long way, matching up the edges again, matching up my lines I made with my other fold and the corners, they're good to go so I can give it a pinch and slide and slide. I made two folds, which when I open my paper up should give me two lines it should give me a vertical line from my vertical fold and a horizontal line from my horizontal fold. Go ahead and fold your paper those two times now. If I folded my paper and creased it well enough, I should be able to see two lines. I'm going to use a Sharpie to very slowly and carefully trace those lines. It's okay if you don't trace it perfectly straight, but try your best to move slow and get your Sharpie right on that line. I'm going to make my vertical one and then my horizontal one. Again, it's okay if it's a little bit wobbly. You don't have to start over or be upset. It's not a mistake. It can absolutely be wobbly. Just do your best to try to get it as close to that line as possible. That's why we made the fold. Now I'm going to find the very middle where my lines intersected and I'm going to make diagonal lines coming from each of them. I'm going to start in this top square here, starting at the middle and making a diagonal line that goes up and meets all the way at the corner of my paper. Go ahead and make a diagonal line from the middle of your paper to a corner now. After you finish one, you can go to your next square or rectangle and make another diagonal line that goes from the middle to the corner of your paper. You're going to repeat that four times in all to make that line that goes from the middle all the way to the corners. So you should be making four more lines. Now I should have shapes that look like triangles or slices of pizza. I should count them and have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight slices of pizza. If you can count eight sections to your paper, then you're ready to start. I'm going to start by making a curvy line. Now watch carefully. It's very important where you put this curvy line. This curvy line is going to be like a smile line, an arch, but the arch is not going up and over, it's kind of going down. So I'm going to make this curve like a smile going from one point, I can pick any piece of pizza, and I'm going to start near the bottom, and I'm going to go down and meet back at the other one. Just a little curve, easy. Go ahead and start yours on any one of your slices of pizza pie. I'm going to continue by making another one of these curvy lines right above my other one, but I am leaving some space in between. I don't want to make them too close together. So kind of try to make it a little bit apart from it. I should be able to fit one, two, three so far, and they're all about equal distance apart from each other. Go ahead and make your lines in your slice of pizza pie, always making sure your line dips down, not a straight across line, because that won't give that same optical illusion in our op art. Now that I don't really have room for another one, I'm going to go ahead and start on another slice of my pizza pie or triangle shape. But this time, I'm going to make sure that I connect my line. So I'm going to start at that point and go dip down and back up. So I'm starting at the same point where I left off and down and back up. I'm going to continue this on all of the other slices or pieces of the triangle or the pizza. In this case, it's looking more like a spider web. The more that I connect those lines and dip down and go back up, it's going to start forming that awesome spider web. I'm going to go all the way around my paper. 
This is going to take me a little while, so I'm going to fast forward the video while you work on yours. The most important part of your web is that each line that you make, each curvy line, connects to your last one in your other triangle. I know it looks a little bit confusing, but it ends up really cool once you get it. If you think that you need to work with a pencil because you're not quite sure about a line, maybe you start with pencil instead of Sharpie. It's up to you if you think that you need to absolutely switch to a pencil. Now, when I get to my last one, I'm going to leave this one empty because you have the option to add a spider. You don't have to, but if you want to, you can start by drawing a circle. I'm drawing a small circle. Go ahead and draw yours now. After I draw my small circle, I'm going to connect a larger oval or larger circle to that small circle. That's going to be the body of my spider. Now my spider needs some eyes. I'm going to make two tiny circles near the top or the top of the bottom there. And then two more circles inside to give a highlight to the eye and color them in. If you want to add details to your spider, you can make it however you want. You can add fangs to your spider. You could add eight eyes if you wanted to. It's up to you. But all spiders have how many legs? Four? No, spiders have eight legs. So I'm going to make a total of eight. But I'm making how many on each side? I made four legs on each side. Now, after I have my legs, I'm going to make a vertical line that goes down and connects to my web. Now, when I get to the back legs, that line might change a little bit. That's going to be where the legs are jointed and where they can jump, they can go from side to side of their web and keep spinning it because they do move and bend just like our legs do. So I'm making sure that I make that shape bend at the knee. It's not a knee, spiders don't have knees, Miss Q. Can even make the legs look more 3D or realistic by going ahead and making another side to them to make it into a shape instead of just a line. You don't have to do this and you also don't even have to add a spider at all. That's optional. You could add designs to your spider like polka dots and arrow glass, or I can even add this little dot or circle inside to show where the legs bend. It is totally up to you what you do to your spider. Now I'm going to wait to color it till later when I take out my coloring supplies. I'm going to show you the tricky part. Now this is my last part of the web. As I'm spinning the web, I need to skip over my spider. I need to make sure that I'm still starting at my last web point, but that curvy line needs to jump around my spider, not go through the spider. I want to make sure it looks like the spider's on top of it, not like the web is on top of the spider because the spider would be on top of the web. So now I am all finished. If I made a mistake, I can turn it into a happy accident. I'm not going to start over or get a new paper. All I have to do is if I make a little mistake or accidentally draw my web into the spider, I don't have to worry about it because it could always turn into another line, a thicker line, a striped spider, a polka dot. It could be colored in. It doesn't matter. We always turn our mistakes into happy accidents and just keep drawing. Drawing takes a lot of practice. It's okay if yours is not perfect. Nobody's perfect. I'm going to keep outlining because my spider, I made that mistake and it was a little bit thicker. So now I'm thickening all my lines. You definitely do not have to do this. I'm just doing this while you're drawing your spider. Go ahead and work on yours now. Just a reminder that we can always pause the video to catch up when we need to. I'm going to move on to my coloring, but if you're not ready for that yet, keep on working. We're going to talk about coloring at this point of the video. Now that I have all my web drawn with my Sharpie, now I'm going to use some crayons. I'm going to use my crayons in a pattern. I'm going to use two colors. Choose two colors that really stand out. I'm going to choose maybe something that's more of a Halloween theme. So maybe I'll do a color like orange and green, or maybe I do orange and black or orange and gray, or I could do purple and green, or just my favorite colors. It doesn't matter, but I'm choosing two of them. I'm choosing two because I'm going to create a pattern. I'm going to color every other part of my web with my orange. I'm going to skip over. So I'm going to start with my orange and notice I'm coloring a little bit harder or pressing harder on the sides, leaving a little bit of that white space in the middle. So I start by outlining that triangle shape, 
then very lightly pressing in the middle when I color with my gray. Now that I did my gray, I'm going to switch to my orange again. I'm going to keep switching back and forth between the orange and the gray. Now when I'm coloring, this is what's going to give it the optical illusion. Not only just the pattern of orange, gray, orange, gray, orange, gray, but also the way that I'm coloring. I'm pressing hard on the outsides or the outline of the shape that I'm coloring, but then on the inside, I'm pressing very, very lightly. As I get toward the very middle point there, I'm barely pressing at all, maybe even leaving a little bit of white space to look like a highlight. This is going to make your web look 3D and even like an optical illusion. It is going to be awesome. I'm gonna keep doing that pattern. Now the pattern gets a little bit tricky, especially when you get to the next parts of your web. So what I suggest doing is start labeling your spider web. If you know that you're picking your two colors and you have them ready, well, you can always label so that doesn't happen to you, which has happened to me. If you noticed, I accidentally did two oranges in a row. So I had to go back and I had to go over top with my gray and that's okay. This is very similar to a checkerboard pattern where you have your black, white, black, white, but it skips with every other one. So to get a reminder of how it works, I'm going to go ahead and make a little mark with every color that I'm supposed to do in my pattern. So if I'm following the pattern, every other one switches to that color. So I have orange, gray, orange, gray, orange, gray, orange, gray, and I keep going always making sure that the opposite color is next to each other there. So I even went through and labeled with the letters so I can put a G for gray and an O for orange. This is what's called an AB pattern. It's known as an AB pattern because you have one color that might be your A and one color that might be your B and you go through AB, AB. Now, it's a little different because I'm not using a color that starts with A or B, so I'm gonna make it less confusing by writing the color and writing in that color. You can make any little mark that might help you remember which color to do there. Just make sure you do it lightly so that when you go in with that color, you know exactly which one you're going to use and you can color right over top of that mark. Nobody's gonna know. It's the best way to make sure that you label so that you can just enjoy coloring without worrying about what comes next in your pattern or your sequence. It's a lot of repetition because that's what a pattern is. To give that optical illusion, you gotta follow that pattern. However, if you do make a mistake and your pattern gets a little bit off, that is okay. It is still op art, even if you do more than two colors. I would suggest challenging yourself and still trying this technique of your pattern but if you would rather use rainbow of colors, you could definitely do that and just switch it with every other one. Just switch every time you get to a new shape inside of there, color with that color. It's going to be awesome no matter what you decide to do. I can't wait to see what you create today, artists. Make sure that you color in all of your spots and continue with whatever pattern you choose to do today.